campus. We be work. <laughs> it's just crazy to think about it. And the phone line was dead or something. Like, they would not regularly check to make sure that the emergency stuff was available for emergencies. You know what I'm saying? Babies, it's your girl Selena Corinne here. We are back with another vloggy vlog for y'all. If you are new, hey girl, hey, hey boy, hey, however you define yourself as, it doesn't matter to me. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and press the notification bell. If you are not new, hey Lena Babies, I miss you. We're gonna start doing that. So when I be like, hey Lena Babies, after that, we're gonna be. I miss you. You gotta say that with me. Okay, let's let's try it again. If you are not new, are you get your hand ready? If you are not new, hey Lena babies, I miss you. Okay, that was a little better. Next time, cooperate. Y'all, I told you. <laughs> I told you. I, I told you. I was coming back with another story time, and I'm here. I'm, I'm here. I got you. Don't worry. It's here. I have so many college experiences, crazy college experiences at that. Like, I can do these for days. So, after you've seen the story time, if you like it, make sure you put it down in the comments, and I'll go ahead and give you guys some more, because like I said, I got stories for days, like for years, for days, probably centuries, but for days, for sure. I was followed on campus. We be work. It's just crazy to think about it. Now, yeah, this was literally like the craziest, well, one of the craziest experiences I have ever encountered in my life as a college student. So, y'all, this was in, I would say, about 2018-ish, about to go to 2019. It was definitely 2018. I'm just not sure if it was the end, about to go into the next year or whatever. I was working at Noodles and Company, which if you don't know what Noodles and Company is, it is like a fast food restaurant type of thing, but they sell pasta, salads, just mainly pasta, and you can customize it, get it vegan. Wow, we're not here for Noodles and Company. Crying. <laughs> I was working at Noodles and Company, y'all, and I was working there with my old roommate, that I've done story times on. If you guys have not seen my previous story times, what are you doing, baby girl? You're clearly, clearly trying to figure out your life because you haven't figured it out yet. If you have not watched me, you ain't figured nothing out. Make sure you go and watch some live story times because, honey, let me tell you, just be prepared, okay? <laughs> anyway, back to this. So I was working in the losing company and my old roommate had was like, she was in the middle of getting promoted to being a manager. We're in the middle of it, like, we're into it and everything, so it's so much to go into the story, y'all, like. So, let me just start off by saying that on campus, for about a couple of weeks now, it was a rumor. It wasn't actually a rumor, because it was, like, actually happened, but it was, you know, a case going around the campus that, there is a man that walks by himself or there's multiple men that like spreads out and walks around the campus by themselves hunting for females that are walking by themselves. Now, IUPUI is the PWI. If you don't know what PWI is, think of HBCU and make it opposite. <laughs> PWI is a predominantly white institution, which means you don't really see too many people that look like me or, you know, other races. But there obviously are people that look like me that go to these campuses. So the cases were kind of high in Caucasian women, but obviously men who's doing this, they don't really care at all what race you are. You know what I mean? Some do, but besides the point. Sometimes I would work double shifts if I didn't, you know, want to just work my shift and somebody was calling off. Also, if you work like a double shift, you get like a free meal. My middle name is Free, so I'm going to go ahead and just play for y'all. I went ahead and was doing a double shift, and sometimes my mom would come and get me because I went to college downtown where I live, so it wasn't like I had a full college experience. Like, I could literally go home off of campus anytime I want to. In the middle of the week, on the weekend, whatever it is, I could do it. It's my choice. So, I really didn't get the college experience. It was really more so like I'm going to a community college, which it really wasn't. It was a university, but it was it was confusing. If 
you want to explain that, I can. Because when I get off, if I do a double shift, I'm literally working from open to close. And by the time I'm getting off, by the time we're closing, it's obviously nighttime, regardless if it's winter or summer. So it was a pretty lengthy distance. It was like a 15 minute walk from my apartment to Noodles and Company. At this time, I was living in the apartments on campus. So they offer dorms or apartments just like any other university typically does. Literally, if the shuttle wasn't available because it was after hours, obviously the other option is to take a bike or walk. And your girl didn't have a bike, I wish you did. I went ahead and I was just like, Ma, it's about to be late. You don't have to come. And child, let me tell you, she was already fell asleep. Like, like she, she was here with me. <laughs> So I'm like, you know what? It's okay. It's pretty late. Um, my mom's gonna just like she would literally y'all uh, come all the way downtown, mind you. It's so it's a walk for 15 minutes, but it's like a drive for five minutes. You know how it is, gravity, distance, whatever. And so she would literally come all the way downtown. I lived at the time on the other side of town, on the far side of that town, and she would literally come downtown, take me to my house, and go back home. Like. It was just too much and I was just like, Ma, because at the end of the day, when you drop me off, you're back out here, you know, by yourself and I don't want that. So that night she had ended up falling asleep or whatever and I'm just like, okay, cool. Me and my manager was still there and along with other staff, but it was a very short staff. So we left a little later than we intended to because if you don't have all the staff there, when it's closing time, you got to clean. Everybody has their designated areas that they have to clean. So... If they're not there, you got to pick up their slack. You know what I mean? So we were all like making sure that everything is clean for the crew that came in in the morning, which was crazy because I just did the double and I had to come in in the morning. So me, I kind of like wasn't really worried because the opening crew has to clean again, you know, in a certain type of way to make sure the cleaning crew from the last night did everything they were supposed to before customers come in. So at this point, I'm like, you know what? I know I have to come in and this is my area in the morning anyway. So I'm just going to make sure I double, double clean it. But I'm ready to go because I've been here all day. So me and my roommate are into it at this time. So we're not walking together. We are like, you know what? You figure out your way. Blah, blah, blah. She left a little bit before me because she's the manager. I don't understand how that is if you have the keys. But that's another story for another day. She left before us. Somebody else had the keys. I wasn't supposed to have the keys. That's another story for another day, too. So she's on her way home. I'm walking home as well. And so where Noodles and Company is, it's surrounded by a couple other fast food places. Like it's Sushi Boss, a Thai place, Subway, and Taco Bell, stuff like that. And across the street is the hospital. So it was Riley's Children's Hospital. If you've heard of Indianapolis, then I'm pretty sure you've heard of Riley's Children's Hospital. Um, it's like Peyton Manning's Children's Hospital, stuff like that. But I was like, working across the street from Riley Hospital. Um, and it's kind of crazy because you would think on a campus, especially a campus that's located in the downtown area of a city, like Indianapolis is just like any other city. If you've heard bad things about it, it's just the same thing as your city. It, 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 it happens everywhere, okay? So for this to be, you know, on campus and, you know, downtown and, you know, there's women here, um, I would think that they would put, like, street lights out there, but y'all, this is what it looked like. Yeah, I couldn't see nothing. Now, there's street lights, like, way ahead, so of course you can see a little bit in front of you. But it just was not safe, y'all, especially with the restaurants around. They're closed at this time, and there's no lights on, obviously, because they're closed. So I'm walking home, and the way I have to walk home, I need to walk in as much light as I can. If I try and take sidewalks and, like, shortcuts and stuff, I'm obviously cutting through alleys. It just was not, it, it was not safe, y'all. So mind you that the campus is pretty big because it's spread out kind of on a little section of the downtown and so there's a law school a nurse school all this type of stuff that's going on so the campus like here is a overview i'm gonna try and find an overview and if i can this is like kind of what the overview of the campus looks like this is just probably a snippet i don't know i have to find a picture but the campus is gigantic y'all like when i say it's gigantic when i have to walk to class i would literally not have to work out the day because of the certain classes i have to walk so i'm walking home and i'm trying to walk in as much light as i can and as i turn this corner y'all it's this car that was already sitting in like this alleyway now mind you if i told you if i want to take a shortcut to get home faster i can cut through like the hospital but it's so many more sections dark than it is just 
if I walk on the street or whatever. It's a little bit longer, but I have light that I can see a little bit more than if I just try and cut through this hospital. And obviously can't nobody hear me because it's brick walk. Yeah. So at this point, I'm over here like, okay, that was kind of scary, but I didn't think nothing into it, but I'm definitely like, I'm watching you. All these cases are coming back into my head like, hey, hey y'all, it's a, 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 a person over here looking for women walking by themselves. Hey, ding, ding, ding. you're walking by yourself. Oh, so I'm like, yeah. Now, here's the scary part, y'all. I probably didn't tell y'all this because I'm traumatized. But the car was sitting in the alley with his lights out. Yeah. You said what's so scary about that? I'm about to tell you. Hold on. The car was sitting in the alley by itself with the lights out. And as soon as I passed the car, it's about to turn the corner. Turn The, the person turns the car on. I couldn't even get that out. The person turned the car on. So I'm like, oh, this is type of type of huh? Ooh, look at that light come through. Anyway, y'all. So I'm like, okay, that's kind of scary. But, you know, we got to go up. Huh? So I'm steady walking. I'm passing where I used to work at, which is Starbucks on campus. It was called Barnes & Noble's Cafe because they didn't want to steal the trademark. It was Starbucks, y'all. And basically, I have to pass the building, which the Barnes & Noble's Cafe is connected to the student center, which you can get like food, your books, all this type of stuff, financial aid and all that is in the center. But it's close. It's like 11 o'clock at night almost. It was really actually 11.30. We usually live out at 11, but since we were short staffed, we had to stay a little longer. So it was like 11.30 when we left out. So mind you how dark it should be at 11.30 with stuff closing usually at 8 or 9 on a school campus, you know? So I'm passing the Starbucks, and as I'm passing, there is this man that's sitting on this corner. And me, there's a lot of homeless people that's usually around campus because for one, we're downtown and we're smack in the middle of downtown. And for two, where we're at, we're on a college campus. So, of course, there's going to be plenty of food places around. And Taco Bell was still open, but it was on the other side of Noodles & Company where I worked at. So, at this point, I'm just like, he's probably a homeless person, but I'm still going to watch it too. I'm walking past going to my apartment, and he gets up and starts walking. So, okay. Y'all, let's not even get into the fact that I was already having a rough day. I can't even remember what was going on, but honestly, being on that campus, it was a lot of stuff that I had to deal with daily, being the skin color that I am, and just having the knowledge that I know about my history and things that goes on around me. It was very rough on that campus. Not to say that it was a horrible, horrible experience. Let me... All right, y'all, I have to get that glare out of my face or whatever, but... It wasn't like a horrible, horrible experience being there. It was just very different, especially when I got accepted into all these HBCUs and all that. If you want to know why I didn't go to HBCU, let me know in the comments and I can make a story time on that. You're, you're going to be like, girl. You serious? Yeah, I, I know. But it was just more so just everything that was going on around me. And that day, my professors was getting on my nerves when i say they were getting on the last nerve that i had reserved for the rest of the day it was gone <laughs> i had to be working too it was gone by 12 30 girl i'm trying to tell you they was really getting on your girl nerves and i had to literally compose myself a lot of times because for one they don't play you at pwi don't bring that stuff over here baby girl because we do not tolerate it and two I really wanted a future, you know, so I didn't want to put anything that's going to jeopardize my future, my education, and my career, you know, and make it a risk or whatever. So it was already just a rough day already starting. And then for me to have to stay later, first off, it wasn't my intentions to do a shift, like a double shift. It was just like a, hey, they called off, but if you stay, like, we'll give you extra this, this, or you can get this or whatever. So I really didn't have nothing to do anyway. I was caught up with my work, so I was just like... It's extra money. Go ahead. You're going to spend it on some food anyway. So go ahead. So for me to do that and then thinking that I'm going to originally be leaving at 11 like I usually do and not get out to almost midnight, let alone I have to come back and open in the morning. We open at 9 a.m. Let alone after that I leave, I have to go to class. Like I was just already frustrated. And then now I'm having to look over my shoulder because of all this stuff that's happening on campus and nobody wants to be safe about it. There will be literally times where there was females, y'all, females calling for security. We had on campus emergency phone.
phones if like your phone was dead or you just need something like as soon as you pick up the phone it's basically automatically dialing the police and they're supposed to automatically answer when you pick it up but there will be times where we're calling on the emergency phone especially the cases that was being reported and the phone line was dead or something like they would not regularly check to make sure that the emergency stuff was available for emergencies you know what i'm saying so it was just very so much of just like everything that was going on it was just frustrating for me. Also, on top of this, I didn't even have my car yet. I was a sophomore going into junior year. I didn't get my car until like the beginning of junior year. Literally like the beginning of junior year now that I think about it. But my sophomore year, I was obviously walking around campus. My freshman year, I really didn't see a need to be, you know, having a car, especially if everything that I need is on campus. My job, my school, my house, and all that. You know what I mean? So... I was just like, a car isn't really a necessity. A, a, a necessity. A necessity to have. But after this experience, I was like, yeah, I have to definitely get a car because I'm not doing this no more. I'm walking home. The man that comes up from behind me that was sitting down that I thought was asleep, he's going very, very slow, but he's looking at me in a way that's like, it was just, it was just very weird. Like, the eye contact and everything was just weird. So as I'm going, my immediate thought was, y'all two are together. I'm not stupid. I don't watch Taken. I don't watch. I don't watch Peter Pan. I don't watch Aladdin. I don't watch all these things where they was getting kidnapped. I'm not stupid. I know. I know. It's okay. Give it up. You're not gonna kidnap me today. It's hard. I don't even know if the movies really got kidnapped and all that, but you know what I'm saying. It, it, it's the moral of, of the story. Get back into it. So at this point, I'm on my way home and as I'm looking forward, I can see like the lights because the hospital is literally very, very huge. And so one side of the hospital is literally all the way where I work. And then it's so big that like it, it just it's very huge. I don't even know how to explain it, but it's so huge that across from my apartment is another side of a hospital. Like it's so many hospitals around my campus because IUPUI is the number one school for nursing. So it's a lot of nursing programs, a lot of nursing schools and all that around. It was not enough lights though, I will say that. As I'm seeing these lights coming down towards me, I'm like, okay, if I go up under these lights, I know it has to be like some police officers or something like this. And I know they don't have no problem taking me home because it's literally across the street. But when I go into my apartments, it's back dark again. It, it was so dangerous on campus, y'all. We had so many reports, so many cases, so many filings and everything, and nothing was ever done for it, and nothing's still ever done for it. Like, people are still fighting to walk the walk the freaking stage, y'all. Like, it's just crazy. So, not to bash IUPUI or anything like that. Like, if you want to go to that school, I definitely recommend, because it is a very good school for a career-wise. It was just college things, just like other college campuses. If you go to another college campus, you're going to run into problems. So don't take my problems for, you know, face value or whatever. But that was the whole thing. I'm like, if I go to this police officer, I know he's going to help me. Y'all, why I go up under the lights and win the car out there? <laughs> why are you crying? <laughs> win the car out there, y'all. I'm like, okay, so this is all set up. Hey, this, this was set up. Where's the camera? all these cameras up under here actually so at this point i'm like all right i gotta walk fast so i can't call my freaking roommate because she's blocked me and like i said we were into it so it just wasn't like it just wasn't gonna work my mom is asleep so i called my friend who was living on campus i won't say her name even though she probably won't care but i was like girl you know them cases that was going around campus? So you did school on. I'm like, girl, guess what happened? And I'm telling her what's going on. So she FaceTimes me. Like, when I say this is my ride, or, like, she's a rider, for real. Like, she, she going, she going to ride. And so I'm, like, FaceTiming her or whatever. And so she, we basically try to play it off to make it seem like nobody knows that somebody is watching me or whatever. So I place it up. And the way I place it up, he's kind of close behind me. But I do have a pocket knife. Let me just say that. I just didn't have a taser, which I really wish I did. And I didn't have, like, a, a weapon or whatever. But I did have a pocket knife, which I don't know how that. But also, it was just, I don't know, y'all. So as I placed the phone.
thrown up above me. I'm trying to play it off because far back it was like ambulances, but it was like the kind of distance to go to my job, like back to my job. You know, obviously when you see an ambulance, you can see them like how far they are. They can be very, very far, but you can see the flashing lights. And so basically I was just real loud and I was like, girl, you see them ambulances down there? Basically, that was giving her time when I did this. She hurried up and screenshotted it. And, you know, if you have an iPhone, if you press the button, um, the camera button on the FaceTime thing, then it'll pop up the words like so-and-so has taken a screenshot on FaceTime. But if you screenshot it like you're actually taking a screenshot, it won't show. So as I did that, I kind of did it like slow that she had enough time to like take the picture and I can put it back down and play along with it. So she took the picture and seen everything that was going on, y'all. I escaped. Okay, I I dodged because tell me why that man was wanted. <laughs> he was wanted, y'all, and he was following me. So you mean to tell me I'm supposed to be on this safe campus, this safe environment, so to speak? And y'all got people that's wanted walking around. And y'all know we, we don't have a lot of family members. Some people don't have no family members. There's some people from California coming all the way to Indiana to go to IUPUI, y'all. You mean to tell me you, you think they got their whole family here with them? So how are you going to explain that to somebody family when it comes out to all this is happening? We had bomb threats on campus, y'all. We just had a lot of stuff going on. And it got better, like, the next year. Like, we didn't have that much stuff because they cracked down on security. But before then, it was like a, what do I do? <laughs> do I stay in my dorm the entire time and try and do virtual? This is before virtual even happened, y'all. This was, like, 2018, like I just said. It was just so much going on. I didn't know what to do. So, as I'm still on the phone with her, I'm going into my apartment and... When you first go in, you have to walk, I would say, about 20 to 25 steps to get up under some light once you get into the apartments. Yeah, I know. Also, to get to my apartments, I could either go down this dark road and then turn real quick and it'd be the light. But if I know somebody's following me, I'm not going to go down any dark road. I'm going to stay up under as much light as possible. If I want to stay under the light, I'm going to have to go a little bit longer to get to my apartment like you just see how much inconvenient it was so i ended up staying under the light of course as much as possible so that she could see and she just kept periodically screenshotting it just in case we need to show the time frames like okay this is how long he's been following her or whatever luckily um she had her one of her roommates because we wasn't roommates we were just like very very close she had one of her roommates try and get in touch at the police shuttle that was on campus and she told like she knows me like we knew each other like back on campus. She knew my apartment number and everything on campus. And so she was able to tell the police officer where I live and to say, hey, can you just be right there? She's walking, you know, and things like that. So by the time I got around the corner, which took me longer than if I was just went down the dark alley and turned, the police officer's right there. And the man kind of like turned into this alleyway where like, if you turn in there, it's so many different ways that you can go in that like, you have to literally see where that person it, it was just crazy so the police officer was there and she was on the phone with him on another phone and then that's how we kind of like understood that this is what's going on so i put a report out and everything i still don't know to this day if it's been resolved nobody's ever emailed me i don't even know if i have access to my email still y'all like that's the crazy thing about it it's just um uh, well you shouldn't worry about it no more you're not in here okay like it was just a uh, yeah i don't care it was very scary it was a very eye-opening experience let alone me being the youngest of my siblings and I'm the only girl so it's not like I had a sister or something other than my friend who was there but she was already in her dorm and I have passed her dorm that's the crazy thing when I passed the Starbucks had her corner from that is her dorms which is like a hotel type of thing and you have to have a key to get in there it, it was just like in order to get into our buildings it's very secure because you can't get in unless somebody lets you in or you have a key to scan but outside it's free game and that's just what i did not like like it was a very very scary experience that's really all i got for you on the story time y'all like i said i have so many more juicy story times that i can literally tell y'all for days like if y'all want a full week of story time 
I probably could give y'all that. My college experience, girl, you would be for a rude awakening, for real, because I, I have literally more than you can imagine. All right, if you enjoyed the story time, make sure you put a unicorn or a basketball in the comment section if you have made it this far. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up, and press the notification bell, y'all, and I will see y'all in the next vloggy vlog. Bye! I'm so fucking happy, y'all.